Hello, guys. Why are chemists great at solving problems? Because they have all the solutions. Okay, that's a silly joke. But today we are talking about solutions. And indeed, chemists do work a lot with different types of solutions. So what is a solution? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. The solvent is the dissolving medium and it is present in the greatest abundance. You have the most of that. And then the substance that is being dissolved is called the solute. So when you are, for example, looking at salty water, water is going to be your solvent and salt is going to be your solute. So when a solvent is water, the solution is actually called aqueous solution. And substances can dissolve in water by three ways. The first one is dissociation. Uh, these are uh, ionic compounds that separate into smaller ions. Uh, interaction with water. This is characteristic for molecular compounds. And then there are some substances that will react with water when they dissolve. So... What happens when stuff dissolves in water? Let's start with ionic compounds. So what is an ionic compound? When you have a metal with a non-metal or a metal with a polyatomic ion, it's going to form an ionic compound usually. So these ionic compounds actually dissociate by separating into smaller ions. So let's take a look at sodium chloride. We have the green sodium ions right here and the chloride ions in purple, and they form a so-called crystal lattice. Okay, so they have a very nice arranged structure. And then when they dissolve in water, they actually fall apart into smaller ions. Well, what type of ions? They fall apart into Na plus and Cl minus ions, okay? Now, what's really interesting about this process, which is called solvation, is that the water molecules actually have a partial positive and a partial negative side. Let me explain. So here we have a nice water molecule. This is our oxygen atom, and these are my hydrogen atoms. And oxygen is actually quite greedy. Oxygen loves electrons, right? So when it bonds with hydrogen atoms, it will not form ions to take away completely the electrons from the hydrogen. But what it does, it pulls closer the electrons to itself. So when the electrons are closer to the oxygen atom, the oxygen side of the water molecule is going to have a so-called partial negative charge because you have more of the electrons towards that side. And the hydrogen side is going to have a so-called partial positive charge because the electrons are further away from it. So when we have a chloride ion in water, like this little purple ion right there, the water molecules will want to orient themselves with their positive side towards the negatively charged chloride ions. And they are going to form a structure that looks similar to this. Do you see how the hydrogen atoms are actually facing the chloride ion? It's pretty cool, right? And then the opposite happens when you have the Na plus ions, the sodium ions. So the water molecules will want to face the positively charged ions with their negative side this way. Okay? So the negative side of the oxygen is facing the positively charged sodium ion. Okay. One more important thing. So ionic compounds are actually called strong electrolytes. You heard about electrolytes, right? When you are going to do some exercise, after exercise, it's a good idea to drink electrolyte solutions because when one sweats during exercise, the person can lose electrolytes. And drinking, for example, Gatorade or something like that might be beneficial. So all electrolytes are going to dissociate in water and strong electrolytes fully dissociate in water and the solution will conduct electricity.
Okay, so these are ionic compounds. What happens when actually molecular compounds dissolve in water? So molecular compounds are generally consist of non-metal atoms and they take the form of a discrete molecule. So what does that mean? That means that you have the atoms, for example, in case of methanol right here, of hydrogen, oxygen, this is an oxygen atom, hydrogen, 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 and carbon atom connected together with bonds, okay? These are called covalent bonds. We are going to talk about this more later in chemistry. But for now, the most important part is these compounds are connected with bonds, and when they dissolve in water, they do not form ions. The bonds stay there the whole time. They simply interact with water, okay? They will not dissociate, but they will interact with water. So, for example, if you take table salt and table sugar in your kitchen, you will see that they are very, very similar. And they both dissolve in water if you are trying to make a solution. But the real difference is that table salt, sodium chloride, will dissociate as an electrolyte and fall apart into ions, okay? But table sugar is actually a molecular compound. It consists of a bunch of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms, and it will not dissociate, okay? And as a result, the solution will not conduct electricity, and all these type of molecular compounds are called non electrolytes okay all right so let's take a look at the practice problem what dissolved species are present in a solution of the following okay so we have sodium bromide when sodium bromide uh dissolves in water it dissociates right because this is an ionic compound it's going to dissociate into na plus and br minus or bromide ions. So you can represent that these ions in an aqueous solution by adding A and the Q after the ion in parentheses, A and the Q. So you are just showing that it is dissolved in water. Okay, what about potassium perchlorate? We're going to form K plus, right, potassium ions, and perchlorate ions, ClO4 minus, also aqueous. Okay, what about this compound right there? Is it an ionic compound or is it a molecular compound? Well, this is a molecular compound because it actually consists of all nonmetals. This is actually an alcohol called ethanol. So when it dissolves in a solution, it will stay as C2H5OH in water, but it interacts with the water molecule. You will not break any bonds. It will not fall apart into any ionic species. Okay, what about the next one? MgNO3 twice, magnesium nitrate. So magnesium nitrate is going to fall apart into Mg2 plus ions, right? It is going to be aqueous. And nitrate ions, NO3 minus. Okay, notice one thing that actually we have two nitrate ions in magnesium nitrate. So when this ionic compound dissolves in water, it will form one magnesium ion and two nitrate ions, okay? This is really important. All right, what about the last one? Sodium sulfate. So we are going to form sodium ions, which is Na+, right? How many sodium ions will we form? One or two or three or five or more? If you only have one Na2SO4. Two, right? Because of this two right there. And how many sulfate ions? Only one. And the sulfate ion is SO4, two minus, and this is also going to be aqueous. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Solutions are fun. See you in the next video.